page 33. Action, Robert Ringer, 2004. Nothing happens until something moves. 1.8. Insight 4. Action produces genius, magic, and power. The words of 19th century German playwright Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, boldness has genius, power, and magic in it, have had a great impact on my life. For my personal use, I have modified von Goethe's words to read, action produces genius, magic, and power. Boldness, daring, brazen, and similar words clearly imply action. Boldness, for example, implies bold action, and I suggest that the bolder the action, the greater the genius, magic, and power that is likely to flow from it. You will note that I list power third in this sequence, the reason being that power is the culmination not only of action, but of the genius and magic that result from action. There is something wondrous about action that is impossible to adequately describe. Action is the key to the brain's ignition. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to be motivated to act. If necessary, force yourself to take action, and motivation will follow. It is the combination of action, genius, magic, and power that produces motivation, which, in turn, leads to ever more action. Action stimulates both the body and brain cells. It brings you in contact with surprising things, unexpected events, and incredible people who have the potential to be crucial to your success. Take action first uh, even if it's just to explore possibility uh, and your creative juices will rise to the occasion. Once that happens, you will become increasingly motivated to take more action. Because genius, magic, and power are unique and integral parts of the action equation, they merit separate discussion. Genius When it comes to the relationship between action and genius, some might view it as a chicken and egg situation. Does action produce genius or does genius produce action? I would say that it's a positive cycle wherein both are true that is, as with motivation. Action produces genius, and genius, in turn, spurs one to take more action. However, you have to come down on the side of action as the first cause e the initial spark that sets the positive cycle in motion. Action, in other words, brings out the genius in a person before genius returns the favor. Action is life action is energy until something moves, nothing happens. The genius I am referring to here has little to do with raw IQ. If anything, it is more closely related to emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence has to do with creative thinking that leads to real life results, as opposed to intellectual thinking that produces results on structured tests. Action generated genius results from a phenomenon I like to refer to as an expansive mental paradigm that is the capacity to think beyond one's normal system of beliefs and tap into the infinite intelligence of the cosmic catalyst. I use the term mental paradigm to describe an imaginary box within your mind, a box that houses what you believe to be the world of the possible. Everything that lies outside the perimeter of this box represents the world of the impossible to you. It's the combination of what lies both inside and outside of this imaginary box that forms what is commonly known as your system of beliefs, that is, what you believe is possible and what you believe is impossible. Page 34 What determines on which side of the box's boundaries something lies are your experiences, your education, your environment to everything you've been exposed to throughout your life that has helped to shape your belief system. When you expand your mental paradigm, your mind is open to new ideas, new concepts, and new possibilities. A rigid mental paradigm equates to a closed mind, similar to a dead universe where everything is already in place and nothing can be changed. Part of today's hip corporate slang includes the expression thinking outside the box, 
which is just another way of referring to an expansive mental paradigm. Unfortunately, most people who talk about thinking outside the box haven't a clue as to what it really means. Corporate types love to mouth the latest in jargon, but, as everyone in the business world is aware, the typical corporate atmosphere isn't known for encouraging people to stick their necks out and take bold action. What's so exciting about a human being's capacity to expand his mental paradigm is that it gives him the power to change the law of averages, that is, improve his odds of succeeding. Human beings, unlike any other species, are much more than just conscious creatures. Perhaps the most significant difference between a man and an animal is that an animal knows, but a man knows that he knows. An animal looks at the heavens and has no idea what he's looking at. A man not only has a scientific understanding of what he's looking at when he views the sky, but he also can reflect on what he sees. It is awesome to realize that a human being is the only matter on our planet whose atoms are arranged in such a way that it can reflect on its very existence. A human being can choose to change the nature of his existence by altering events, because he has the capacity to plot, plan, conceptualize, and even will things to happen. What this means is that a human being can choose to go beyond the bondage of his belief system and tap into the infinite intelligence of the cosmic catalyst. As William James observed clear back in the 19th century, the greatest revolution of our generation is the discovery that human beings, by changing the inner attitudes of their minds, can change the outer aspects of their lives. An individual can make conscious decisions to smoke or not smoke drive fast or slow, or eat healthy or unhealthy food. And each of his decisions can dramatically change the law of averages when it comes to his health and longevity. He also can decide whether to get out of a bad marriage or relationship, stay put or move to another city, or remain in his current job or start a new career. And each of these decisions can have a dramatic effect on how the remainder of his life plays out. Another way of viewing an expansive mental paradigm is that it is the birthplace of resourcefulness, or alternative thinking. By alternative thinking, I mean looking for alternative solutions outside of your normal belief system when confronted with seemingly impossible circumstances. You do this in lieu of focusing on the apparent impossibility of a situation. Did you ever experience the thrill of doing something that everyone said couldn't be done? What happened in such an instance was that you saw possibilities that others couldn't see, because your mental paradigm was more expansive than theirs. This made you more resourceful, more attuned to alternative ways to accomplish your objective. You successfully broke through the existing boundaries of your mental paradigm and discovered what was outside that is, you discovered possibilities that originated beyond the existing perimeter of your belief system. Further. Since we don't know all the possibilities that exist outside of our mental paradigms, theoretically speaking our limitations are pretty much where we choose to place them. When you tap into this limitless reservoir of ideas and opportunities, it's important to understand that you may not always find a solution that allows you to achieve your original objective. Instead, you may find an alternative that takes you in an entirely different direction but a direction that more often than not turns out to be superior to the one in which you were originally headed. Perhaps the best way to define an expansive mental paradigm is that it is a heightened state of awareness, an awareness that is unquestionably intensified by action and the bolder the action, the more intense the awareness. Of course, there are other kinds of actions than just body movement. Meditation is action. Writing is action, reading is action. What a tragedy it would be to live 80 years and never get around to buying and reading the book that could have played a major role in your success. Anything you do, so long as it is purposeful and constructive, may be considered positive action, but the greatest expansion of your mental paradigm comes from bold action. What helped me gain a better understanding of the heightened state of awareness I have just referred to was a book I stumbled across some time ago, Cosmic Consciousness, 
by Dr. Richard Morris Buck, originally published in 1901. Dr. Buck was a graduate of McGill Medical School and a prominent psychiatrist in Canada. Sadly, he died from an accidental fall on the ice, at age 65, a year after his book was published. At age 36, Dr. Bach experienced an illumination that lasted only a few seconds, but during which time he claimed to have learned more than he had in years of academic study. My suspicion is that the illumination he referred to was a massive expansion of his mental paradigm that allowed him to tap into the cosmic catalyst to a degree that few people are ever able to achieve. Dr. Bach's metaphysical experience never repeated itself? but he ultimately came to believe that it was the emergence of a new faculty in man that takes simple consciousness to a new level. He hypothesized that such historical figures as Jesus, Buddha, Dante, and even Walt Whitman possessed advanced consciousness on a consistent basis, while in the rest of us this genius aptitude is still evolving. In the last section of Cosmic Consciousness, Dr. Buck documents numerous cases of cosmic consciousness experienced by other individuals whom he interviewed during his lifetime. Shortly after my introduction to the work of Dr. Buck, I read another fascinating book, Thinking and Destiny, by Harold W. Percival. This thousand-page work is, to say the least, not the easiest of reading, but the author's foreword alone is worth the price of the book. From November of 1892 I passed through astonishing and crucial experiences, following which, in the spring of 1893, there occurred the most extraordinary event of my life. I had crossed 14th Street at 4th Avenue, in New York City. Cars and people were hurrying by. While stepping up to the northeast corner curbstone, light, greater than that of myriads of suns opened in the center of my head. In that instant or point, eternities were apprehended. There was no time. Distance and dimensions were not in evidence. Dot. I was conscious of consciousness as the ultimate and absolute reality. Dot. It would be futile to attempt description of the sublime grandeur and power and order and relation and poise of what I was then conscious. Twice during the next fourteen years, for a long time on each occasion, I was conscious of consciousness. But during that time I was conscious of no more than I had been conscious of in that first moment. As with Dr. Buck, Harold Percival appears to have experienced a spiritual expansion of his secular belief system that brought him into sharp focus with the cosmic catalyst. Like Buck, from everything I have read about Percival, his was a remarkably active life which I do not believe to be a mere coincidence. The more action a person takes, the more expansive his mental paradigm becomes and the stronger is his connection to the infinite powers of the cosmic catalyst. I am convinced of this beyond anything I can put into words. My conviction is based not only on the self-evident nature of this connection, but on decades of first-hand experience. Page 38 